We look at Thanksgiving. It's a time of celebration. And I just love being together with family, like all of you do. Um, I love being together with my church family. Uh, it's so very important. Uh, many traditions <clears throat> at during the holidays, one we started years ago was having a scrapbook. Uh, when people would come, we'd have them write letters of thanksgiving to Jesus. And it was very special <clears throat> to see and to look back at all of those letters from my parents, from my aunts and uncles, and uh, uh, Julie, uh, uh, from your uh, grandpa, <clears throat> grandpa, your, my uncle Pete, your grandpa, I had a letter of his that I gave uh, to uh, Pete Wario Senior, uh, Jr., and just touching, they're at our house back uh, years and years ago, and now he's with Jesus, but having that letter and then giving it to his son who had no letters from his father, and here he had this letter of thanksgiving to Jesus that he took to frame in his home. I read those letters, and I read <clears throat> uh, letters that my mother wrote as she sat and had dinner with us and her prayer of thanksgiving to Jesus and my father just touches my heart. And then I read my kids' little prayers when they were young and as they're growing older and my, now my grandchildren. And I just want to encourage you. It's a wonderful tradition uh, to start that and to have those memories with you. <clears throat> I love Thanksgiving for many reasons, of course. A time to be re, re, uh, reminded of the blessings God has given us. And our children are such a wonderful blessing. Uh, we have an amazing staff here at our church. I just want to thank them uh, for all they do. Uh, it, the support staff, uh, the pastoral staff, uh, they do such a wonderful job. Let's give them a great hand for all they do in our church. Appreciate them so much for all they do. <clears throat> and um, and I was, uh, as I was gone, I thought I, how much I'm thankful for our church family for our church family, because without you, we couldn't do the things that we do. Last week, I talked to a young mother, uh, just a new Christian. Uh, in the last few months, she was baptized down at Park Point this summer, and <clears throat> a year ago, they weren't talking too much about Jesus in their home, but all of a sudden, that is changing. And uh, she sent me a little video, and I want to turn it up a little higher, and so you can get the beginning of the clip. And uh, But I want you to watch this video. Uh, this was after Awana's uh, this, this Wednesday, and Ronnie sent it to me of her daughter, and it's just a precious video. So let's uh, turn the lights down just a little bit, and we'll see it better, um, and we'll watch you, this video together. Aubrey, what did you learn at church today? Uh, John 3:16. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. You're so cute. I'm so glad you're learning about Jesus. Praise the Lord! Isn't that beautiful? <clears throat> I'm so glad you're learning about Jesus. I'm so glad you're, and they're doing that. They're learning about Jesus because of you and your support and your faithfulness. Uh, Ronnie, what's your little daughter's name? Aubrey, and how beautiful to see uh, her love and asking questions and, and growing little by little in our faith. Uh, being a Christian doesn't mean we're not going to have problems, and we know that. It's, it's, we're still going to have problems, but God is so good. And <clears throat> today we have so much to be thankful for. Uh, all of God's promises, even in the times of our darkest moments, God's promises are there for you and me. Some of you may be going through a dark storm right now in your life, but God wants you to know he's with you to comfort you in that storm and that he'll bring you through that. Sometimes he uses those things we go through so we can help others when they go through similar things in their lives. And so I'd like you to turn to Psalms 107. I was reading it again in my devotional time <clears throat> and in, uh, on vacation, and I really felt that this is something I'd like to talk to you about uh, today. And remember, this is God's inspired word. It's not just somebody writing down some things. This is God's word to us, his beautiful children. Uh, in Wednesday night, we talked a little bit. We're going through the book of James, and it talks about, in James, it says, we are God's prized possession. Isn't that beautiful to think 
that we are God's prized possession. He loves each one of us more than we could ever, ever realize. I feel so favored, don't you, that we are his prized possessions, those who come to God and put their trust in him. It says in Psalms 107, we'll take it in some sections here, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. I'll ask you, has the Lord redeemed you? Let me see your hands. Are you a Christian? Then speak out and thank him. And that's what God's word says. If God's redeemed you, tell people about it. Speak out. Let them know God has changed my life. Uh, That's what they did in their baptismal service today. They shared that God had changed them uh, and that he's working in their lives. So has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. Tell others he has redeemed you from your enemies. Our enemy is Satan, whether you realize it or not. He's an enemy. He hates you. Uh, He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what the devil wants to do. And Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. And that's what God wants for each one of his children. Doesn't mean we won't have trials and heartache. But God loves us so very, very much. <clears throat> and then it goes on to say he's, exi- he's gathered us, the exiles from the lands, from the east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in the wilderness, lost and homeless, hungry, hungry and thirsty. They nearly died. I want you to picture that in your mind. It's pretty... Uh, it just, to me, very descriptive of people wandering in the wilderness in our society. Just think of how many are wandering, lost, hurting at death's door, uh, the depression, the heartache, the suicide in our uh, society. is it, It's just terrible. And young people that are going through it. Uh, people are going through a lot of things. Wandered in the wilderness. And, and this is what God wants to realize when they're, we're wandering, when we are lost and homeless, hungry and thirsty, nearly at death's door. Then they cried out to the Lord, Lord, help us. They cried in their trouble. And he rescued them from their distress. How many of you have been rescued from distress? Pretty exciting when God reaches down and we could share these testimonies all week long. How God has rescued us from our heartache, from our distress, from what we have gone through in our life. And he's not done. You're going through that storm. He's there and he sees you. But you need to call upon the name of the Lord. When we call out for him, then he rescues us from our trials. Sometimes that rescue seems to take too long. Sometimes we're wondering where he is, right? Uh, and and uh, what was it with the boys that were lost underground cave, was it, this last year? Remember it, read it? And that rescue took a long time. But they rescued all of those young boys, thank God. And God is in the rescue business he rescues us from our heartache, from our, from our sins, from our troubles, and that's what he wants us to know. But we have to call upon him to rescue us. We need to teach our children to call on the name of the Lord. When they're in trouble, call on Jesus to rescue you. My sister, when we were young Christians, <clears throat> down in the hillside, uh, it was at the time uh, that was a lot in the papers about the hillside rapist. And my sister was on her way to church on Ninth. We were on Ninth Street there, Ninth Avenue in uh, Second Street or Third Street. She was walking down from Fourth Street. A guy grabbed her and pulled her into the alley, and and she's just in shock. But she called on the name of the Lord, and she said, "In Jesus' name, let me go." And he took her hand, his hands off of her, and she took off running out of the alley and down to church, and she said, if you want to go to church, you can come. I don't know if I would have invited him myself, but uh, anyway. Uh, uh, but God rescued her in her time of fear and distress when she called on the name of the Lord. We have to teach our kids to call on the name of the Lord. When they're tempted, call on the name of the Lord. 
to do the wrong things, call on the name of the Lord. When you're sick, call on the name of the Lord. Whatever it is, because he hears our cry. Aren't you glad he hears your cry? He loves us so very, very much. People are wandering in the wilderness. And God's people have to be concerned about those who are wandering. We have to reach out to those who are wandering. We have to help those who are at death's door. That's part of the wonderful ministry God has given us as his church. <clears throat> Lord, help, they cried, and he came in their trouble and rescued them. He led them straight to safety to a city where they could live. Let them praise the Lord for his great love <clears throat> and for the wonderful things he has done for them. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Thanksgiving is a time where we look back at what he's rescued us from. Where we look at what he's provided for us. Not where we look at all the problems. We call to him and he hears our need. But it's, t it's time to look at what he's done and to be thankful and grateful. And every Christian should do that every day. It shouldn't just be on a holiday on Thanksgiving Day that we're reminded of this. <clears throat> Verse 8. Uh, or let's see, verse uh, 9, uh, he says he satisfies the thirsty, fills the hungry with good things. Some sat in darkness and deepest gloom, imprisoned in chains, iron chains of misery. I want you to think about those words just for a moment. There are people perhaps in your neighborhood. There are people perhaps in your own family that are in iron chains of misery. Iron chains of misery. I can't imagine it being more descriptive of the <clears throat> heartache of those going through trials. Chains of misery. And, and then it goes on to say, uh, as they, as we look at that, some, as they sat in this darkest and deepest gloom, they rebelled against the words of God. They scorned the counsel of the Most High. These are people that have rebelled against God. And all of a sudden, their rebellion changed them and, and enslaves them in their sin and <clears throat> their misery. And, and sin, the progression of this sin, it, it says we're tempted when we are drawn away by our own lust and enticed. And when that temptation brings forth, births forth uh, sin and sin brings death, that's what we have to teach our children to stay away from these temptations. We can fight temptation. Uh, again, remember, sin will cost you more than you want to pay, keep you longer than you want to stay, right? That's what sin does. It, it, it's, it just blinds people. It blinds people. Sin and temptation goes on to say they rebelled. That is why he broke them with hard labor. They fell and no one was there to help them. If you look at the history of Israel, and it's a picture of humanity, it's a picture of every Christian, every person, that we are enslaved by sin, and you look at the Israelites, how God blessed them through many miracles, but then they went back and they worshipped false gods. <clears throat> worshipped false gods. Idols. Prayed to uh, idols that couldn't see, couldn't hear, uh, and God's heart was broken. They did that so soon, even after the miracles. And so God punished them. Then he brings them into the promised land. And it didn't take long after Joshua was gone and Caleb. And then they started rebelling again, <clears throat> worshiping false gods, going after the things of this world. And God punished them. He took them out of the land he gave them. They went into captivity, into Babylon. Uh, they were uh, again and again punished because of their rebellion and sin. But God sees us even in our rebellion and sin. And look what happens after they were in their darkest moment, deepest gloom. They rebelled against the words of God, scorning the counsel of the Most High. That is why he broke them with hard labor and they fell and no one was there to help them. Lord, help, they cried in their trouble. And he saved them from their distress. We need to teach our children to call.
call on the name of the Lord. We need to learn <clears throat> how to call on the name of the Lord. And we need to learn not to go that way. So much is brought on by our stupidity in life. So much is brought on by our rebellion and not following his word. We could save so much heartache if we would just follow what his word teaches us to do. And that's up to us to read his word and to get involved in listening to that. <clears throat> that is why he broke them. They called out and the Lord saved them. He led them from the deep, their, their darkness and deepest gloom. He snapped their chains. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. I'm so grateful God snapped the chains of sin in my family. That he snapped the chains of darkness in my family. <clears throat> I, I, I just, I can never forget what he's done for me. What he's done for my family. He broke the chains. We would have just been another statistic. Our family. But God did something to redeem us. He did something to redeem you. And there are millions of people outside this church that need that redemption. That's why the church has to wake up and do the work God has called us to do. He snapped the chains. He broke those chains of darkness. <clears throat> he led them out of the deepest gloom. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done. We can never praise him enough, can we, for what he's done. <clears throat> never, never praise him enough. Uh, Natalie, I'm sure, was such a beautiful thing for you to see your daughter up here. And so wonderful to see your mother, uh, Katie's grandma, here to celebrate what God has done. But that's by being faithful, training our children, bringing them to church, praying with them, praying for them. And God hears our prayers. And he spares us from so much, doesn't he? You, you don't realize in your life what he spared you from because you are following him. What you've been saved from, what you haven't had to go through because his great love. What a wonderful God. He loves us so, so much. <clears throat> Some were fools. They rebelled and suffered for their sin. They couldn't stand the thought of food and they were knocking on death's door. Lord, help, they cried in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. I don't care who you are or where you are or what sin you've done. God wants to save you from that. There's nobody beyond help in this world that God can touch if they will open up their heart to a wonderful Savior to a wonderful Savior, a wonderful Heavenly Father, and to think today that we're here and he loves us so very much. Rob, how many years now that you've been here? Jen said since your little girl was born. And so what a difference in your family today, isn't it? How God has changed that. And now you're moving, and I hate to see you move, but... Such a beautiful family. But he broke the chains, didn't he? And we could go from testimony to testimony. Rob called, he said, could be a, I be a part of my children's baptism today? How special to be a part of that, to be a part of that. How special to see cousins that are uniting and want to follow Jesus together. Uh, just so beautiful to see God breaks the chains that the devil tries to hold us in. But God breaks those chains. And so they called out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them. Snatching them from the door of death. Friends, we don't realize how close we might have been to that 
death's door. We just don't know. The man that I told you about that he fell over and he was crawling on the ground by his mailbox. Anyone remember that? And I, I went back and I helped him up and <clears throat> he was an older uh, man, uh, I think close to 90. And I helped him in his house and we sat there and he said, I can make it from here now. And I said, no, I'll stay with you. And we went up the stairs. I helped him up the stairs. I shared with him <clears throat> about God's love. And, and you know, God was involved that day. And, and the beautiful thing is I sat with the man and I said, he said, I was just going out to mail a letter. And uh, he said, I was mailing my tithe check to my church because I can't get there anymore. I thought, wow. How faithful. And then I talked to him a little bit more about Jesus. And he was from more of a traditional church. And <clears throat> I explained what, uh, that I went to a similar church and how God showed me what a beautiful relationship I could have with him. And I told him about Jesus and how I became a Christian. And I said, would you like to pray with me and do the same thing? And just invite Jesus into your heart, reaffirming your love. I want to do that right now, he said. And we prayed together. And then I get a call this week. That was a month ago. He passed away. They're having his funeral today. We don't know when our last day is, do we? But God does. I'm not sure where his heart was. But I know God saw something special in his heart and brought that to fruition in his life to personally receive Jesus by faith in his heart. You see, giving money to the church won't give us, get us to heaven, does it? Being good won't get us to heaven, but Jesus will get us to heaven. That's what's so beautiful. <clears throat> we never know when our last day is. That's why it's so important to get right with God when you're young, when you're a young person like these young people today, Sunday school, whatever it might be, the, Ronnie's little girl asking about Jesus, memorizing verses. If you don't become a Christian before you're 17 or 18 years, it's likely you never will. That's how serious it is to reach this generation. The majority of these kids come to know Christ before they're even 12 years old. And that's what God wants, tender little hearts that will put their trust in him and have a relationship so when they're in trouble, they'll call on the name of the Lord. <clears throat> he sent out his word and healed them, snatching them from the door of death. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and sing joyfully about his glorious acts. <clears throat> Some of them went off in their ships, plying the trade routes of the world. They too observed the Lord's power in action, his impressive works on the deepest seas. He spoke and the winds rose, stirring up the waves. Their ships were tossed to the heavens <clears throat> and plunged again to the depths. The sailors cringed in terror. They reeled and staggered like drunkards. And they were at their wit's end. At their wit's end. Interesting. How many of you have been on the ocean when it's been bad or on a lake when it's been bad? Uh, big waves. I talked to one lady. Uh, she was in the Antarctic. And she said, we were on a smaller ship, and we had to tie ourselves down in our bunks. There were nine-meter waves. We're talking nine meter, close to 30 feet, these waves. And that's the picture I get of these sailors and uh, right here. And they were at their wit's end. How are we going to get out of this? Is there any hope whatsoever? Have you ever been at your wit's end? 
Sometime we get at our wit's end. We don't know what we're going to do, where we're going to turn, how we're going to get out of this jam. Is there any hope? Maybe it's your marriage falling apart. Is there any hope? Maybe it's cancer. Is there any hope? You're at your wit's end, but God is faithful. And we call out to him, God can save us from any trouble. Any trouble. What a wonderful God. So when you're at your wit's end, friend, don't give up. Call out to God because he hears your prayer. He hears your prayer. He loves you with an everlasting love. They were at their wit's end. Somebody told me once when you're at the end of your rope, tie a knot and hang on. Don't give up. Hang on. Because God is there. He's still in the rescuing business. Thank God. They were at their wit's end. Lord, help, they cried in their trouble. And he saved them from their distress. He saved them from their distress. He claimed, he calmed the storm to a whisper. That's something when you're in that turmoil of life and God calms that storm to a whisper. He calms your heart and the anxiety. That's what God does. That's what he does. Calm the storm to a whisper. And he stilled the waves. <clears throat> what a blessing was that stillness as he brought them safely in the harbor. You may not see the answer, but God's going to bring us safely in the harbor. Someday we're going to be there together in heaven, safely in God's harbor. What a wonderful thing. God will bring us in safely in the harbor. <clears throat> Excuse me. So then he, he says this. Let them praise the Lord for his great love. Up north, it's hard to get you to do anything. Hardly clap. It's so cold and we're so stiff. But God wants us to praise him for his great love. And for the wonderful things he has done for them. Let them And I wish we had time so we could have testimonies. But let them publicly, publicly declare him, exalt him before the congregation and before the leaders of the nation. God wants you to publicly declare his greatness. He wants you to share his love with the lost and dying world. Publicly declare. His love. Going through a problem, God's with you. <clears throat> you have heartache, God is there. In the storm, he'll bring it to a whisper. But you need to call to him for help. I'd like you to bow your heads in prayer. And as you bow your heads in prayer today, just to consider God's wonderful love for you. For you. How much he loves you. How much he loves your children, your grandchildren, your family, your neighbors. And he wants us to bring that wonderful love to others. <clears throat> the important thing today, dear friend, is we've heard testimonies of others putting their trust in Jesus. But what about you? Has it just been religion in your life? Or is it truly a relationship with the king of the universe, the creator of all mankind. Do you have that wonderful relationship with Jesus Christ? Have you invited him to be your personal Lord and Savior? Have you said, Jesus, I need you in my heart. I need you to forgive my sin. I need you to help me in my storm right now. If you haven't done that, today you can and we're not asking you to join a church. We're asking you to join a family. The family of God. 
doesn't matter if you ever come back to this church, but today God wants you to have a relationship with him, to put your trust in him, to say, Jesus, forgive me. I want to follow you forever. If that's you, just slip your hand up. Don't be bashful. If there's anybody here, just say, that's me. God bless you, ma'am. Anybody else today, just lift your hand up to the Lord. Don't be bashful at all because God loves you. He knows you're here today. You're not here by accident. He has a plan for your life. Give you a moment. If there's anyone else, just say, yes, Jesus, that's me. I want a relationship with you, not just church anymore. Well, I'm going to pray a prayer, whether you raised your hand or not. And for those of you who did, God saw your hand. He saw your heart. We'd like to help you on your journey with that. But I'm going to lead you in a prayer <clears throat> that changed my life 50 years ago. And it's a simple prayer. I knew I was a sinner and I needed a Savior. And I put my trust in Jesus. And I've never been the same since. I was one of those little troublemakers. And God came into my heart. We're going to pray with you as a church family. Maybe some of you just want to reaffirm that commitment to the Lord today. You can do that as well. But make this your prayer from your heart. Follow me out loud. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. Today I want to turn from my sin. I need your help to do that. Jesus, I invite you into my heart to be my personal Lord and Savior. Please forgive all of my sins. Help me to obey your teachings and to tell others about your wonderful love. Thank you that I'm forgiven, that I'm a Christian. In Jesus' name.